300 miles out to sea in the Pacific Ocean off mainland Mexico and south of Cabo San Lucas are four submerged shield volcanoes rising up from the deep ocean. Socorro Island, Clarion Island, San Benedicto Island, and Roca Pardita. Some of these islands last erupted in 1993 and weren't even discovered until 1533. No humans live on these small islands until a small Mexican Navy base was built in 1957. In 2017, they became a national park and marine reserve for the country of Mexico. It's a 25-hour boat trip way out to these islands. They're in the middle of the ocean, so there's all types of endemic fish, like this beautiful clarion angelfish that only live on these remote islands. There's all types of huge pelagic fish that come to these islands because they're the only rock formations in that entire part of the ocean. The animals have evolved there to come in to feed or breed, or even like the giant manta rays, they come in to be cleaned by some of the smaller fish like these clarion angelfish. This is a baby angelfish, and they have to hide in the rocks so they don't get eaten by predators. But as they grow into the big, beautiful, bright orange adults, sometimes you'll see 50 to 100 of them out scuba diving at the same time. These beautiful, giant, ocean, pelagic manta rays that can get 20 foot across come in from all around the deep ocean in that area, close to shore, to the cleaning stations where they actually get cleaned by the clarion angelfish. The angelfish pick parasites and algae off the skin of the manta ray. They seem to really, really, really enjoy it. They come in close to shore, they take their big flapping wings and flap them to let to know the cleaner fish that it's time to come in for cleaning. They have big remoras that hang on the top and the belly of the manta ray that cruise around for a free, uh, free ride through the ocean. There are also very few corals, interesting enough, on these islands out at Socorro Island. One of the reasons, these islands are very deep. Some of them rise over 3,000 feet off the seafloor, and the water there is very cold. Deep upwelling water is not exactly a great place for tropical corals to grow. But in some of the calm bays, you'll find a coral reef growing that has maybe 50% of the reef covered in coral. We only found just a few bays in all of these islands that had a lot of coral growth. What was really interesting is that the corals that grow there, from these round corals to the branching corals, they grow really flat on the rocks in shallow water. We think the reason for that is, is the water's pretty cold, and these corals have to have a lot of UV light in order to produce algae that they grow in the coral tissue that the coral feeds on. So they have to kind of be spread out onto the reef to collect and bring in enough ultraviolet light for the growth of, uh, growth of the algae. And this algae that grows within their tissue gives the coral its color. So these are very unique branching corals that are growing flat on the rocks instead of kind of growing up towards the sea surface. Some of them make even these really weird formations like this frozen wave underwater. So diving there as a biologist, seeing these extremely unusual corals was very, very fascinating as I've not seen corals grow like this anywhere else in the Pacific Ocean. The other really cool thing about coral growth there are these cup corals. These cup corals do not grow algae in their tissues, so they grow in deep, dark water. When you're out diving, it's really cool because you'll see these plaques on the reef that were put down in 2017, marking the whole area as a federal park and a marine sanctuary. What's really lovely about scuba diving on these remote islands, like Roca Petita here, is it takes almost an entire day of mid-ocean going out on this dive boat just to get to this one little pinnacle in the middle of the sea that drops down over a mile deep. 
there's not many people that dive these islands. They only allow a certain amount of divers and a certain amount of boats in at any given time. So you're usually there pretty much by yourself. In order to do the dive, you have to get off the main dive boat and get on these little zodiacs to cruise out where the dive site is. The water is actually quite cold. You have these incredible guides that have been living most of their life on these islands or out to these islands. And they know the marine life and the topography really well. So you kind of feel like you're getting to dive in a place that maybe no one's been to in thousands of years. But at the same time, you have these very intelligent dive guides that know the terrain and know the marine life that lives on each one of these islands. Again, this island, this split rock, drops down over a mile straight down. It is an incredibly unique dive site because of the topography, and it's a small island even though it goes way deep, so all the marine life in that part of the ocean congregate around this one little dinky island. There's lots of upwelling currents. The water is relatively cold. It's very dark when you get down there, so you need bright dive lights to be able to see the marine life. Super fascinating place to go scuba dive at. And once again, nobody around. You see these really cool Mexican hogfish that get about three feet long. This is an adult male. These hogfish eat little crustaceans, so they actually like to follow the divers around because the divers will actually, when they're cruising on these deeper water reefs, will scare up little crabs and little shrimp that the fish like to eat. This is a female of the Mexican hogfish. Now you notice that it has a red color. This fish lives down about 50, 60 to 100 feet deep. The red wavelength of light doesn't go down that far. So even though the fish is bright red in my dive lights, in reality, it's jet black when it lives down at those depths. So the little critters that it's trying to feed on have a hard time seeing it because of its jet black color. These wrasse are all hatched out as females. They're bright red when they're females, and some of the females convert into males and then turn into the pink, big, gigantic, three-foot-long Mexican hogfish that kind of have the big bump on the head. Here's one that's feeding with one of the trigger fish. It's really fascinating to do these kind of dives because the fish are really tame. There's a lot of algae that grows on the reefs. Most of it's not invasive. I mean, it's native algae, so it's all good. And then in around the algae, you see these sponges and orange cup corals. And then also these extremely beautiful gargonians. They're big sea fans. They're very similar to a coral. The colors you see here are the colors of their soft polyps. So this is an orange cup coral with one of the yellow sea fans. Once again, the colors that we see of these certain amount of marine life down on these deep water ledges are only colorful because you're seeing them in our beautiful dive lights. Most of these orange yellow colors way down on the reef are actually black. This is one of the sea cucumbers. They clean the reefs. There's three or four different types of starfish that live down there, but not, not a lot of species like you would see more in the warm tropical waters. This is one of the crown of thorns starfish. This is a big starfish about a foot across, highly venomous. Those spikes on top, you really don't want to touch one because they have incredible stinging cells. The thing about this starfish, which is not good, is they eat live coral. You can see here one of the corals it just got done feeding on. So you don't want these starfish to get out of control because they could eat all the corals on the reef. There's a few different species of little soft-bodied nudibranchs. They're very colorful, but you don't see too many of them because the water is pretty cold. Here you have the octopus, and actually the octopus are very plentiful out there on these big gigantic cliffs where they live on, but there's a lot of sharks that cruise around these underwater ledges, and they love to eat the octopus. So the octopus are normally hiding. This is one of the urchins. You have one of the long spine sea urchins here. The habitat for these sea urchins is really cool because their long spines are poisonous. 
So you have all kinds of fish that hide in them, like the baby clarion angelfish. This is one of the large murex shells. The other thing you see a ton of on these underwater cliffs is lobsters and also these big hermit crabs. There's lots of incredible critters down there, but one of the most amazing things I found on all of these islands is the amount of gigantic bluefin trevally. These big jacks can get about 300 pounds and about four feet long. Normally when you go diving, even in really good habitat, you will see one, two, or three of these big fish. Out here on Socorro and San Benedicto and the other islands, we would see 20 to 50 of these big jacks while we were out diving. It was truly amazing. They're not afraid of people at all because it's a marine sanctuary, so no one ever spears them or catches them. Here at about 90 feet deep are some of the big gigantic bluefin trevally that are feeding along with a dozen white tip reef sharks. Once again, these islands are in the middle of the ocean. They're very deep, steep, straight up and down cliffs, and that causes a lot of upwelling, which brings up nutrients from deep water. Therefore, there's a really lot of bait fish that can live there, and this attracts all the big fish. These big horse side jacks in the thousands just do a circle around these islands floating in the currents. When you scuba dive here, sometimes it's really difficult because you have to know and go with an experienced guide because of the massive currents that flow around these islands. But you can sit there diving at 100 feet deep, look up and see a thousand jacks swirling around your head along with 10 or 15 big sharks. This is really, really, truly a magical place to scuba dive at because you kind of feel like you can see the ocean the way it was a thousand years ago before it got overfished or spoiled by too many people in any one given area. These big horse side jacks just cruise on by and meander and they eat small bait fish, but most of the time when they're not feeding, they're in these big schools going into the current. These are the black jacks. They can get really big, about four foot long and several hundred pounds. This is a young one, and then when they get a little bit bigger, they turn more black. And they are incredibly curious. Every time you go for a scuba dive, they actually will come right up and look into the camera and cruise along with you. These are island jacks. There's four to five different species of big jacks that live there. This is one of the sea bass called a cabria. They get about two feet long, they're ambush hunters. They sit all by themselves on the edge of the cliff waiting for food to come by. But what's really cool about Socorro Island and these other islands in the middle of the ocean, some of the fish have evolved there to look different than they do anywhere else in that part of Mexico. These cabria in the Sea of Cortez are actually green and brown color. But out here on the islands, a lot of them are white and brown. So being that they've been isolated from the mainland for so many millions of years on these islands in the middle of the ocean, sometimes these fish species will evolve into different colors that you don't see anywhere else. This one is extremely beautiful and as you can see, they're not very afraid of people. Sometimes you'll see a dozen of these cabria on one dive and as you cruise on by, you can stop and look over on the reef and they're just sitting there looking at you. Most of them live anywhere from about 30 feet deep to about 100 feet deep. And here on these remote islands, that's where most of the prey fish is located. And so they just sit there calmly. Don't bother anybody and don't pay attention to much of the bigger fish going by or the divers. And just wait for a smaller fish to jump out and grab for dinner. This is one of the really beautiful leather bass. This fish can also get really, really, really big, around four foot long. When they're small like this one here, they have the really beautiful yellow on their tail. And once again, you can see these fish species in other parts of Mexico, but normally you just don't see them that are this tame. 
I mean, these fish are raised with scuba divers going by all the time, and they've never been caught or shot at or poked at. So they're very, very docile, and it's really great as a diver and one that likes to take pictures in movies because you can hang out with them and get really close to them without actually bothering them. Once again, this fish normally lives about 50, 60 feet deep. These are the Graysby, another type of grouper. The grouper and the sea bass are kind of a big bodied fish with a big head. There's big schools of fish almost everywhere you look on these remote sunken volcanoes. And these are the burrito grunts. They get to be about two foot long and the grunts have kind of a sloping front to their head. You'll see them by themselves sometimes feeding, but often, especially like in the afternoon when they're resting, you'll see sometimes schools of 50 to 100 of these big fish, and they're pretty much always swimming into the current. They'll often hang out on these deep water pinnacles and just be real lazily swimming right into the current. When they're all together like that, they kind of draft behind each other so they're spending less energy to just simply stay in the same place. These fish are, are incredibly beautiful. It's really fun to hang out down in a school of 50 of 100 of these. They don't seem to be bothered by divers at all. So you can just hang out there for 10, 15 minutes and shoot video and pictures of them. And it's, it's really kind of a magical event. Not many places in the world you get to see these big schools of fish like this that are completely tame. This is a large sea chub. Often you'll see them by themselves, and sometimes in big schools. This is the yellow phase of the sea chub. Same fish, it just lacks its black color pattern. This is the big panamic moray eel, the big green moray. These are the goat fish, which you often see in the shallow water cleaning and feeding on the seafloor. And then sometimes during the day, once they've fed, you'll see actually big schools of these just hanging out and once again, kind of swimming into the current. When they're together in these big schools, they don't have to use as much energy. Here you see them with the gold and blue snappers all schooling together. The goatfish have little tubercles on the front of their mouth that they actually can feel into the sand with electromagnetic receptors and find little crabs and shrimps that are hiding below the surface of the sand. Goatfish are very common in most everywhere in the Pacific and they're mostly feeding on the sea bottom versus up on the cliffs. These are the really beautiful Creole fish. The babies hang out in the cracks so they don't get eaten by predators, but they get about a foot long and huge schools of them congregate here. They're actually being cleaned by the barber fish and the clarion angel fish. These really cool Creole fish are pretty much everywhere. During the late afternoon, especially when the wind picks up and there's a lot of upwelling, you'll see thousands of them. This is the cornet fish. These fish are really, really, really cool. This is a long skinny trumpet fish. Sometimes they call them stick fish. These fish are really cool the way they hunt. They point directly into the cracks and so the little teeny fish really can't see them very well because they're long and skinny. This is the yellow phase that lacks the black color pattern. And these fish actually have an expandable mouth that gets really, really, really big, much bigger than they look from the side view. And they actually open their mouth really quickly and just suck in little baby fish. These are the really beautiful tropical flounders. They get about a little over a foot long. This is the fish that lays on its side and has both of its eyes looking straight up. That way it can zoom upward and catch little fish for dinner. Most of the places these fish live out on the sand or rocky rubble, but here in Socorro, that may be a mile deep. So they live on the ledges often, right on the rocky ledges. So it's kind of a unique place to see one of these flounders live at. When they're babies, by the way, both their eyes, one are, one are on each side like a normal fish. This is one of the scrawled file fish. I call them file fish because their skin is very, very, very rough. 
They're long and skinny. This allows them to reach way back into the cracks to get little invertebrates and little pieces of algae to eat. And then, but at the same time, if they get approached by a big predator like a shark, they can turn sideways and look quite large. This fish also has a huge tail. You can see this one got part of it bit off. Everywhere you go in these islands, everywhere you see huge lobsters walking around. There are so many of them, and they're out during the daytime, which is very unique. Most places, lobsters are nocturnal, and you only see them at nighttime. But here out on these remote islands where they're protected, they're out in the daytime, and sometimes you'll see five, six, seven, eight of them on every single scuba dive. These are males that are fighting somewhat for their territory. The males actually have those little swimmerettes on their tails, those little fins, that are smaller than the female swimmerettes. So that's how you can sex them. The females have bigger swimmerettes because they actually hold the lobster eggs when they're gravid and ready to lay their eggs. So once again, this is really, really unique to see these big lobsters walking around during the day. I mean, this one was just walking up the sheer cliff that's 100 feet up and 1,000 feet straight down. They don't seem to be preyed upon by the big fish, which is quite interesting. There's lots of sharks around these islands, probably more so than I've ever seen. And usually in other places, the sharks like to eat the lobsters. That doesn't appear to be happening here out on these remote submerged volcanoes. As a scuba diver and a biologist, one of the most exciting things we got to do out on Socorro Island, out in the middle of the sea, is to scuba dive with these gigantic oceanic manta rays. These huge critters come in by the dozens close to shore and circle around these submerged volcanoes. These critters live out in the middle of the ocean. They cross entire stretches of ocean filter feeding with their big cephalatic fins. These fins on the front of their mouth, on their snout there, when they want to filter feed, they open the fins up and channel water into their mouth. And when they're not feeding, they can curl the fins back in. These magical creatures are incredibly tame because they're just filter feeding plankton, shrimp, and small animals. So they have no fear of people and they don't have any stingers like some of the other smaller stingrays. These creatures can have a 22 foot wide wingspan and weigh up to 6,000 pounds. They have different color patterns. Some of them are jet black, and then some of them are white and black, of which they call the chevron pattern. When you take pictures of them, each individual one has a distinct pattern. So one of the scientific studies that they're doing is trying to get lots of pictures of these gigantic rays and compare those pictures to find out where they move about the ocean. What's really fun in watching these big rays is all the other fish that hang out with them. These rays are swimming underwater. They look like a gigantic, slow-moving butterfly. And then these big remora fish hang out on the underside of the rays and also hang out on top of the rays. And they're basically hitchhikers. They sit there and just try to get a free ride and then hopefully get some food along the way. These big manta rays come in close to shore at Socorro, primarily to be cleaned by the clarion angelfish. So they'll spend most of the year out at sea and travel many, many thousands of miles to get to this remote area where these submerged volcanoes are and the clarion angelfish come out and clean their skin of algae and parasites. So they're really attracted to this area. You pretty much know they're going to be there. And you can go scuba diving with these gigantic, absolutely beautiful, tame, and mellow creatures. These manta rays can grow up to 40 years old. And they only have one baby every year or two. That's why they really need to be protected throughout the mid-ocean because 
their babies are so few and it takes the female an entire year of gestation to produce a baby. You can tell the difference in the males and the females. And when they come in to the cleaning station, they have really fun behaviors. They'll flap their wings. That tells the other animals that they want to be cleaned. They'll go right over the top of scuba divers and they seem to really like the scuba diving bubbles on their belly. And the other thing really cool about them is the blackjacks, which can get all the way up to 150 pounds, seem to be the fish that likes to hang out underneath them and on top of them, and sometimes right in the manta ray's mouth. These fish, I think just, the manta ray moves so much water and it's so strong and powerful that these fish will actually go along like a bicycle drafting behind a bus out on the freeway. It just makes it easier for the fish to move from point A to point B when they hang out underneath one of these big rays. So sometimes when you're diving, you'll see one manta ray come through and it'll have eight to 10 big fish that are drafting behind it, above it, or underneath. Here you can see when the angelfish come in to clean it, the rays really seem to like it. They wiggle their big fins, undulate them, and then they just hang in one place for a considerable period of time to get cleaned. And the cool thing is, again, they let scuba divers come right up to them. They don't seem to have any fear of people whatsoever. And so it's pretty easy to know that the manta rays are going to be there because every year they come to these cleaning stations. And if they didn't, they potentially could die of parasites being covering their bodies. Here you see a big blackjack right in the mouth of one of these big manta rays. Two remoras, one on top, one on the bottom. And then two more blackjacks hanging out behind it. I don't know if all of these fish hanging out with the rays get bothered by them, but they seem to just pretty much ignore them. When you're out diving, you can just hang out with them and kind of communicate with them. They seem to be very, very, very comfortable as people, you know, with people out and the divers out. The other thing that's pretty cool is because of taking pictures of these and each one having its own pattern, some of the divers that go out to Socorro Island and the other islands on a regular basis see the same big manta ray each time they're out there. Here you can see this big remora is actually trying to fight off all the other fish so it gets the prime spot right on top of the manta ray. So it's like almost a, a full city of critters cruising through the ocean when one of these big manta rays show up. Now we have manta rays in other parts of the world too, and also here in Hawaii, but they're a smaller manta ray. They're called the reef manta rays. These are the big mid-ocean manta rays. This is one of the really, really, really pretty parrotfish, the bicolored parrotfish. Gets to be about three feet long. The males are bright blue and green and super beautiful. And the females are more of a drab color. They have more of the reds and brown colors on them. The interesting thing about these parrotfish is they're all hatched out as female. Later on in life, some of the red and brown colored females will convert into males and turn blue. This is a star-eyed parrotfish. The one thing that's really, really neat about Socorro is you're always gonna see these guinea fowl puffer fish. They are everywhere yellow phases, black and white phases, they're actually all the same fish, but each one comes in a different color. Now these puffer fish, they nibble on the reef, they feed on little bits of algae on the reef, and they actually have really sharp teeth. They can bite off an entire chunk of the reef. And most all the other fish, including people, leave them alone because they have a neurotoxin underneath their skin that's highly poisonous. This one's changing colors from spotted to yellow. And then there's also a lot of the balloon fish. And they're a type of porcupine fish. And then some of them are also called burr fish. 
These are the fish that can fill up with water and look like a round balloon with the spikes coming out of them. Now these fish also have this tetrotoxin neurotoxin underneath their skin and would be highly poisonous if anyone tried to eat one. The fish actually know this, so that's why they're not afraid of people. This is the one that tends to hang out the spot fin burfish with all the scuba divers. Uh, these fish are really funny to watch. I'm not sure what they're thinking, but anytime there's scuba divers in the water, you'll see sometimes 10 to 20 of these fish will come off the reef and just hang out with the divers in the midwater. They cruise in between the divers, in between the bubbles. I mean, they don't feed out there, they feed on the reef, but they just seem to be really curious. This is one of the box fish, and the males are bright blue, the females are gray with white spots. But what's really, really cool about Socorro is the box fish have different colors on top. Some are striped, some are yellow polka dotted, this one coming up even has solid yellow on its top, which is really unique because these boxfish live all throughout the warmer Pacific climates, but they normally all look about the same, like here in Hawaii, but not down in Socorro. Each one can have a completely different color. They're called boxfish because these fish are really hard, almost hard as a rock. The only thing that moves on them is the fins, mouth, and eyes. The other incredible thing about diving on Socorro, especially Roca Pedita Island that has a thousand foot straight down cliffs, is the amount of sharks that are there. So these volcanoes are way out in the middle of the ocean, so there isn't habitat for sharks almost anywhere else except around these submerged volcanoes. The white tip reef sharks that grow to be about six feet long, seven feet, are everywhere. They cruise up and down the cliffs. That one was trying to catch an octopus back in a crack to eat. So these white tip reef sharks are really good for the reef because they eat dead, dying, and sick fish. So they keep the reef healthy. You can see here, they're hanging out in a cave with a whole bunch of lobsters. Being that these cliffs are straight up and down, and these submerged volcanoes are actually quite small, the reef sharks have to find a place to rest, and there's not many places to rest. This is one type of shark that actually can stay still on the bottom, open its mouth, run water through its gills, and breathe. Most other shark species have to keep moving. So you'll find a cave here on Roca Padita, and there'll be 10 to 15 white tip reef sharks sleeping in it, along with 10 to 15 big lobster. So that's really kind of a unique thing to see. Most places where you go in the Pacific Ocean and you see a white tip reef shark, you'll see one here, one there, one here, one there, except if they're breeding. But out here on this little submerged volcano that's a mile deep, you'll see a whole bunch in one spot. These are the really beautiful silver tip reef sharks. Now this shark species normally only comes up to maybe about 90 feet deep. So they're more of a deep water fish. We were about 90 feet deep here, and there was probably 10 to 12 of them that were circling around us. They're very inquisitive. They like the deep water channels. So this type of shark actually eats sick and wounded fish that live in the deeper water, where the white tip reef shark will do the same thing in shallow water. These silver tip those sharks, they cannot sit on the bottom. They have to keep moving in order to breathe. And they're often hunting with these big jacks at the same time. This is a super, super, super beautiful shark. Occasionally, like we got to see, is a big tiger shark that'll cruise by from the depths. These 14, 15 foot long tiger sharks are very mellow underwater to people. They normally even won't even let you get close. Their primary food is sea turtles and big fish, and they just cruise along and meander real slowly. This is the Galapagos shark, which is very common down in Socorro. This 12 foot long shark also eats dead and wounded fish as its main food. Sometimes you'll see these in a group of four or five or just by themselves, but the Galapagos shark, sometimes they're at 100 feet deep, 
and sometimes they're only at one or two feet deep. There's dusky sharks, hammerhead sharks, all kinds of sharks out at Socorro that you can dive with. These are the big diamond stingrays that get about five foot across. Now these stingrays hang out on the bottom. Unlike the manta ray, these stingrays have stingers, so you don't want to get anywhere close to them because they can be incredibly painful if you were ever to get jabbed by one of their stingers. Now they have electromagnetic receptors on the underside of their head, and what they do is they feed on crabs, shrimp, and clams underneath the sand. So they cruise on the sand, they send an electromagnetic response into the sand and pick up the vibrations of live critters living under the sand and then they dig them up and eat them. Sometimes they'll actually hide on the sand and bury themselves so you can't see them at all. So you have to be really careful with these stingrays if you're going to be scuba diving uh, down close to the seafloor because they're very common out here on these islands. This is a beautiful razor or yellow-tailed surgeon fish. And these are the really cool, they're very, very common out here in Socorro. They're the gold rim surgeon fish. You usually see this surgeon fish in pairs and they often feed with the clarion angel fish. So they're primarily algae eaters. Now once again, they call them surgeon fish. That bright yellow spike on the tail is sharp. You don't want to touch it. This is the yellow tail surgeon fish. Almost on every single scuba dive in these deep water volcanic islands, you're going to see these really, really beautiful orange or red tail trigger fish. They call them a trigger fish because they got that spike on top of their head. It's like a trigger that can go straight up and they can go into a cave and lock themselves into a cave. These incredibly beautiful foot long fish normally look gray underwater. They live down 80, 90 feet deep all the way up to maybe 20 feet deep. But where they live, not much of the red sunlight gets down that far. So divers will go by these fish and see a hundred of them coming back from a dive and just think they're solid gray. But when you get the bright dive lights on them, as you can see, they're incredibly beautiful. Here's a group of them that are getting ready for mating. And they lay their eggs way down on the seafloor. These fish are pretty much always moving all the time. So they're very comical to watch, almost like a cartoon character. But if you get within two to three feet and get your bright lights on them, they are one of the most beautiful critters out there. This is the orange-sided trigger fish, and they get to be about a foot and a half long, and they also have a trigger. Now, some of them are different colors. Some of them are white, some of them are banded, and some of them are polka dotted. Once you're done diving for the day, you go back on the dive boat, park in some calm little cove, have a good dinner, rest and relax, and get ready for the next day's diving. Incredibly special place to visit way out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. One of the rare places still left on Earth where you really truly feel like you're out at sea maybe the way it was a thousand years ago. Fun place to scuba dive, fun place to visit.